Let's keep on going on dosage calculations, looking at all kinds of weird, not weird, different variations of things you're going to see. Well, we have order. Now, KCL, that's the chemical symbol for potassium chloride. Uh, I couldn't put the whole potassium chloride word. I'd run out of space. I wouldn't want to write on my wall over here, okay, or the door frame. So, potassium chloride, we're supposed to give 60. Well, what is that? Remember this? Milli equivalents. A slight caution. That is not a weight measurement like milligrams. That's not a volume a measurement like milliliters. It doesn't matter what it is. It's kind of a weird way to measure things. Not a lot of medications are done this way. There are a few, but it doesn't matter what it stands for. What it really is, you don't want to know. Go ask a chemist. They might know. But anyway, <clears throat> you're supposed to give 60 of them, 60 milli equivalents. Again, in the book, the homework problems have all this listed out in most cases. You don't have to know all of this to work the problem out. But just for practice, because you should know this anyway, we're supposed to give it orally, as this entire chapter is, TID three times a day, but when? Before meals. We have got some, ooh, look at this. The stuff we have, the dosage strength is 40 milli equivalents per each 30 milliliters. That means each 30 milliliters has 40 milli equivalents in it. Well, just, again, doesn't matter what a milli equivalent is, just set it up like you've been taught and let it work itself out. Order is 60 milli equivalents. That's your order, put it over one. I know you're getting sick and tired of me saying the same things over and over. But I get sick and tired of seeing students do the wrong thing. And I want you to do properly, do it well, and make a good grade, and learn something. So do it the very same way I say every time, and you're going to get it right. Times. Our second fraction is going to be the dosage strength, the supply dosage. Well, in going backwards, we have 40 milli equivalents is in every... 30 milliliters of fluid. And it doesn't matter what a milli equivalent is because we're gonna eliminate those anyway. They're disappeared, they disappeared, they're gone. Just blew them up. Now we have, oh, we have three non-one numbers. Two on the top, 60 here and 30 here. One on the bottom here. So when you have that, the two top numbers, you multiply those together, you get that, then you divide by the bottom number. So using my handy dandy calculator here, <clears throat> let's see, we have 60. We then multiply by 30, and that's 1800. Then we divide by 40, and the answer is 45. We give 45, whatever that says, milliliters. There you go. Now a little more about this zero canceling thing. That's not a big deal, but realize we have a zero here. We have a zero here. We've got a zero there. The rule is for each zero on top, you can cancel another zero on the bottom, just a one to one ratio. But there's two, one here, one here on top, one on the bottom. <clears throat> so I can only cancel out the least number, one. I cancel one out on the bottom. Well, which one do I cancel on top? Doesn't matter. If I cancel this one, that's fine. Or cancel it, but only one or the other. You see? So I could just cancel this. What's left? 60 times three divided by four. Or, I'm doing a what if in here, what if that zero was still there? Assume I had not canceled it and just, there we go, that's pretty sloppy looking. But if I had canceled this zero and this zero, well then what do I have? Six times 30 divided by four. Either way, no matter which way I do it, I get the answer of 45 milliliters. So, milli equivalents, you don't do anything different with them. You'll never have to change that to something else. It's always going to be just cancel out. Everything's hunky-dory. <clears throat> Whatever hunky dory, I don't know what hunky dory means, but it is. Let's try this one. Oh my goodness, be very careful. 
dudleymycin, the most potent antibiotic known to mankind. It will kill any germ, every germ ever invented by human beings. Uh, <clears throat> so we have, we're supposed to give 0 0.4 grams. By mouth, every 12 hours, can't give that stuff too often. It's dangerous stuff. So first, write it down, 0 0.4 grams. Oops. That's the order. But now, oh, looky here, and this is a fairly common thing. It'll crop up sometimes. I have some 100 milligram tablets, some 200 milligram tablets, and some 300 milligram tablets. Which ones do I use, and how many of them do I use? Well, just this, this think ahead a little bit. Whatever I put over here, whether I put 100 milligrams in one tablet, 200 milligrams in one tablet, or 300 milligrams in one tablet, Milligrams will be down here with some number, but grams is here. Well, I can't cancel those. I must change one into the other form. Well, how about if I change the grams into milligrams? One more time. If I'm converting grams into milligrams, and for those who've been watching this entire series of video lectures, you know what I mean when I do that, right? If you don't know, you're way behind. That means I move the decimal three places to the right. So 0 0.4, I go 1, 2, 3, put the two zeros there, dot ends up there. The answer, well, not the answer, but that number, 0 0.4 grams, becomes 400 milligrams. So now what I put here, realize, doing some more air math here. There's air guitar, there's air quotes, now there's air math. What if this is 100 milligrams per one tablet here? 400 divided by 100, that's four. I gotta give four tablets. Hmm. What if I put 200? 400 here divided by 200 here, I give two of those. Well, giving two of something is better than giving four or something, right? What if I put 300 here? Well, you got some kind of weird, goofy number that's, hey, what's four divided by three? See, if you take well, 400, 400, Divided by 300, oh, the answer is 1.3333, 1 in one third. Um, you don't want to give somebody, or try to give somebody a third of a pill. You give one, but that third of a pill, that's not going to work. So that, you know, forget that. So that's not, not a good option. But the best option of the other two is the 200. If you give 200 milligrams in every one tablet, Again, hey, if you like that zero canceling thing, zero, zero, two zeros there, zero, zero, two zeros there, four divided by two, I give two tablets. I understand. If I put the 100 here, I would have given four. That's still the right amount. I would still give the patient the right amount of medication, but what you're after is you want to give the fewest or least amount of the pills. Some patients swallowing four pills, <coughs> that's hard to do, then swallowing two pills. So anytime you have more than one option, whether two or three different options, try to give the least, the fewest amount of the tablets or pills or capsules that you can to get the job done. I hope that made sense. Again, why is that not a good option? Because to give one and a third pills, you can't, you know. Now going back, you should have already looked at this, scored tablets. That means here's a tablet. It's got a little groove down the middle and you can snap that in half and those two halves are fairly equal and they're good enough to be considered halves. So if you were to give a half a tablet or one and a half, you could break one in half, give one and that other half, that's okay. But you can't get the thirds. That would not, in fact, don't get a pill and try to break it in thirds. You'd never want to do that. No, never try to do that. So good to go, making sense. Man, you're getting this down. I can tell by the look on your face that you are understanding this. Yes, of course you are.